Now we're ready to make some micarta. So this rust pitting is very, very deep. I hadn't appreciated how deep it was before because it had rust on it. So I'm gonna go back to the blasting cabin and just blast the whole blade and start with that. having to take this thing to the belt grinder to take off the rust. It was so pitted. Unfortunately, I lost most of the old file words on the other side.
Okay guys, now we're going to electroplate the knife. I've got it shined to a nice polish and it's been cleaned thoroughly. I cleaned it with some Scotch-Brite and water and soap and then cleaned it with vinegar and uh, steel wool and then wiped it with a paper towel. Water did not stand on it best I could get it. And what I mean by water not standing on it is when you poured water on it, it just ran flat. It didn't bead anywhere. What that tells me is it's ready to be plated. So I've got uh, one of my wife's Pyrex deals here and some fishing strings suspending the knife in solution. And then I've got a power supply off of Amazon, one of those universal deals. And then I've got it connected to some alligator clips. And those alligator clips are connected to pieces of copper. And they're just sitting in a vinegar solution. And this is just regular household vinegar uh, bulk from Sam's Club or whatever. Uh, there, I've got the alligator clips connected to two pieces of copper. And the reason it's connected, uh, excuse me, to two pieces of nickel. And those pieces of nickel are in solution. And the reason for that is I wanted to make absolutely certain which end was the negative end. And the end that bubbles when you do this is your negative. And this end here is bubbling. This end here is not. So I know that this is negative. I was pretty sure that the outer barrel on one of these universal connectors is uh, negative. But I wanted to make absolutely sure before I uh, plate it. Because you see, if you, if you hook up your polarity in reverse, then you plate in reverse. In other words, you pull stuff off the knife onto the nickel negative and you contaminate your plating solution with whatever the knife's made out of in this case some type of carbon steel to fix any of the positive negative issues i just wanted to check in advance so i've got some nickel sulfate i bought this stuff off of amazon two pounds worth uh, way more than i need but what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off current to the to the deal and then now I'm going to add this nickel sulfate to my vinegar. And I'm sure I'm supposed to weigh this, but I'm sure it doesn't matter that much either. Oh, let's go back. Yeah, that's probably overkill. And I'm just going to actually use a piece of the nickel to mix it in. And that's probably good enough. So that green color is the gold. That's kind of what we're looking for here. So now I'm going to turn my power supply way down. Uh, lower voltage plating results in a smoother finish. And uh, my hope is to have a really smooth finish here. So I took the time to buy one of these voltage adjustable um, power supplies off of Amazon. And this one is set to 3 volts which is where I want to plate at. Okay, so here we are. I've got anodes dispersed throughout. Uh, anode, 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 anode. And they're just connected in series in the uh, vinegar or 5% acetic acid solution with copper sulfate dissolved in it. And then I've got the, the uh, cathode clip to the knife here. And um, once I turn on the power, we should start plating. So here we go. And we should be electroplating now. What's interesting is the knife has already started to take on some nickel just from sitting in there. And there are bubbles coming off of the knife. Maybe something I'm not supposed to be sniffing on. This is kind of cool. And I'm worried that this, a little too close basically altering my current. Maybe that's better.
Okay guys, I've been off and on this project for some time. I do not know exactly where I left you last time, to be honest with you. Until I edit the video, I won't know. Uh, I got bored with this project and had some other honeydews to take care of, so that's kind of what I've been focusing on. I basically ground the handle to approximate shape that I was looking for, kind of a short and stubby handle. Then I noticed that the terry cloth and the epoxy just don't make for a vibrant micarta. Um, you get a real dull look out of it. No matter how fine you sand it, you never get just a really great polish. And I think it has to do with the combination of the light fuzz that's natural to terry cloth and the uh, you know light fuzzy that you get when you grind or sand epoxy. And I wasn't getting, it was kind of blah, just the, you know, squared off handle. And I could see that no matter which way I took it in the squared off handle realm, I wasn't going to get the look I was going for. So what I decided to do was a rock pattern. Uh, a channel that I watch is uh, The Simple Little Life. Uh, he's a knife maker and homesteader. And he does how-to knife making videos. So I am attempting a rock pattern from his channel and I imagine since his channel is very how-to based that he probably doesn't mind me using his technique or attempting to use his technique but basically the end result is a real you know rough looks like a crumbled piece of rock and that plus this uh, watermelon pattern I don't, I don't know what we're going to end up with but uh, we'll give it a try and see what happens in hindsight, I think I would have done the green here, the white here, and the watermelon pattern up here, and made the knife handle wedge shaped. So to where the top of it would be like the rind, and then it would come down into a slice of watermelon. And I may remake this knife at some point in the future uh, with that. Rephrase. I may make another watermelon knife and do that. Uh, we'll just have to see. So for now, uh, I'm going to get to grinding and I'll speed up the speed so you'll see what I'm doing here. Now, don't ask me how that's going to polish up, but believe it or not, it actually, like, feels real good. Like, it feels, it feels like that's never going to come out of your hand. I think that's going to get us there, boys. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of this off camera to give you the finished product because uh, you don't need to watch me play with a grinder for however long it takes after I speed this up. What I'm using is on my tight stitched wheel blue compound and it takes frequent application of that blue stuff. It's real chalky. Um, so blue on this and then just a dry wheel to finish it off and I get something along those lines. We'll see what the finished deal looks like as far as buffing. I may add white compound. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyhow, you don't need to watch me buff. 
All right, so this thing is giving me lots of grief, particularly this white micarta. I got a real nice polish out of the whole thing using the buffer. The problem is, is the micarta, of course, showed stains immediately and was just, it just white micarta is not cool. Anyway, so on to a plan B way to fix her up. What I did was I took some flits, and, uh, which is a polishing compound if you're not familiar, and I went ahead and took the Dremel and went in each little groove and pulled out all the Tripoli polishing compound that was basically staining the, the white. But then I'm back to kind of a hazy look. And this is a good handle. You know, if this was a tactical knife, I'd leave it like this. But my goal is it was for it to have some shine to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, cleaning wax. It just, uh, instead of like a linseed oil, I could use linseed oil, but this stuff uh, does a great job on cars. So I figured I'd use it on this. That's way too much, by the way. Uh, that's like one whole door on my truck worth. But it dries nice and hard. And it's clean and waxed everything I've ever put it on. So I figured it would be the right thing for this stuff. Of course, I forgot the end of it. All right, we'll let that dry and do some, let's just, uh, like I said, I just sprayed the stuff on and rubbed it off off camera. Um, we'll just let it dry and see what it does. All right, boys and girls, here it is. Uh, you can still see the old maker's mark, uh, old file handmade is what it said. Uh, this blade was probably really too far gone to restore. There's just not a lot of meat there, as you can see. And there still is a few spots like that right there at my fingertip where the rust was just so deep pitted into the blade that I felt like if I were to go all the way in, I would, I would wouldn't have anything left it would be paper thin and I went ahead and after looking at a few different uh, choices I just like this brushed look on nickel I think brushed nickel just looks good so anyhow I just did all that with a, a um, scotch bright disc on the uh, two inch polisher and I think that looks cool to me as far as the blade goes now I did make a lot of mistakes I learned a lot about this hole you know, look I got some wax on her there from my puddle over here. I did make a lot of mistakes, particularly with the nickel polishing. I ended up having, or nickel plating rather, I had to take it down and plate it a couple of times, which the nice part about that was is it helped me get even more of these rust pits out. Uh, there's another one right there that I left behind. Another thing that I learned in making this knife was about handle making and some liner making. Uh, I'll never use white micarta for anything again. I do like this rock pattern. I definitely don't think that I've got anywhere near the cool factor on my rock pattern that uh, Simple Little Life Jeremy does at Homestead Knives, but I think I got something there. As far as the finish, I also probably will never use terry cloth again to make my carta. It's just, it, it, it's too difficult to finish. Uh, this actually did end up being just a boiled linseed finish. And because of the porosity of the uh, terry cloth, I think it took up the linseed real nice, just like wood, wood, just like wood, 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 wood. Anyhow, you get it. Uh, I do think overall the build came out nice. I do think that it uh, looks nothing like watermelon, which was the intention with the green and the white and the red and the black speckles. I think it looks absolutely nothing like watermelon. But I do think it, is a neat restoration on the knife and one of these days I'll get around to giving it away to somebody who wants it. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching guys. I hope it was fun for you. It was certainly educational for me and I'm just really glad to get done with this build and get on to another project. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.